a very good morning to you all i welcome you all to the fifth day of tatva pradbodhini here we begin the eighth scientific session it's my privilege to introduce today's presenter dr suman ma'am has completed under graduation from government ayurveda medical college mysuru and post graduation from government ayurveda medical college bangalore ma'am has 12 years of teaching experience in the department of dravya guna ma'am has published research papers in various national and international journals she has presented papers on medicinal plants and home remedies in many educational institutes and delivered guest lecture at various organization ma'am has published book on ayurveda medicine in 2017 at present she is designated as drug inspector to bangalore rural zone she is involved as a principal investigator and co-investigator in a project sanctioned by rajiv gandhi university of health sciences and ma'am is working as associate professor and head department of dravya guna government ayurveda medical college mysore over to you ma'am a very good morning to one and all uh today i'll be presenting with the topic role of medicinal plants in viral disorders with respect to covid-19 uh till yesterday you had been watching about uh, the diagnosis the pathogenesis the treatment regarding covid-19 to uh, today i will be speaking a little bit of information about uh medicinal plants how they are going to act and what are the major advantages what we come across regarding this like to throw on ayurveda ayurveda's focus is more on creating an energetic balance at higher energetic or inner level it sees all life and nature as constantly evolving towards a higher level of consciousness and also uh ayurvedic formulations have an impact at this higher level of consciousness as well as more gross body level even ayurveda seeks to connect us with this intelligence inherent in nature for example if we are speaking about the drugs of ayurveda the most preliminary drugs and the most highlighting drugs what we come across like ashti madhu amalaki haritaki and many more they are acting at both the levels at an higher level and as well as a lower level even for example it might act as immunomodulatory antioxidant and many more and also at the same time haritaki for example it will be acting as anulomaka in a very simpler way also so like this when we are talking about the drugs it uh, will be acting in the two zones also something about the disease and the virus the diseases are caused by the viruses uh and are increasing worldwide are and becoming a great da- danger to the humanity causing the pandemic throughout this world uh there have been significant pandemics till now for example smallpox chickenpox cholera dengue aids influenza etc for the present uh, recent years we come across still more uh, viruses named as hantavirus pulmonary disease Uh, then uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome h5n1 influenza then h1n1 influenza middle east respiratory syndrome ebola virus disease and recently what we are noticing is the covid-19 which had made us to stay inside the house since past many months and um, this had created a kind of panic in the whole of this world at present uh something about the complementary and alternative medicine so what is this complementary medicine it is it implies that it joins the conventional medicine at an equal counterpart to make the healing process in a faster way okay and uh, the alternative medicine it is a substitute for the conventional medicine it neither uh, works out nor enhances the conventional medicine but uh, in spite it acts as a replacement for the conventional medicine uh, whenever the modern science fails to deliver uh the treatment in a correct time this uh, conventional or alternative medicine comes and plays its role and it times in conjugation with conventional medicine to obtain some synergistic effect uh, towards the treatment it will be acting uh this complementary alternative medicine offers a wide variety types of plants which serves as a key to unlock many mysterious pathologies which is there behind the uh, human kind and the plant derived compa- 
compounds, the extracts, the nutraceuticals, the dietary supplements, whatever we uh, come across, they find their role in application in treating most of the disorders. And also with the increased resistance of these microorganisms to the standard antimicrobial therapy, this CAM, that is alternative treatment, especially from the herbal source, it has been explored at a very gaining speed at present. Then uh, to know something about what is the statistical utilization of these medicinal plants uh, globally, WHO has emphasized during 1970s on herbal medicine research. Since then, the developing countries of the world started working out in a very better way so that they will find a chance to register their drug in the essential drugs list. And also we see that almost 80% of the rural people depend upon the medicinal plants and the traditional practitioners are also uh, use, utilizing these medicinal plants in treating most of the ailments. Also the FAO had at least 25% of the drugs are used in modern pharmacopoeia are derived from these plant sources itself. And at last, the drug development programs of pharmaceutical industries have an important role of natural products as more than 50% of modern clinical drugs are originated from uh, this medicinal plant itself. From a survey from the WHO, it has been concluded that uh, the medicinal plant usage in India is around 80%, in Burma it is around 85%, and in Bangladesh it is around 90%. And uh, several therapeutic molecules are being tested so far and more than 200 clinical trials has been done till today and still there has not been evolved with any kind of vaccine or a particular antiviral for this COVID-19 what is running at present. In the other hand, increasing antiviral drug resistance had made to think about mechanism of resistant pattern, the formulation of new drugs, the optimization of compound delivery and the host component. Already you know what is a virus, what is a pathology, what the diagnosis are there, how it looks like, what is the replication cycle. Everything has been uh, reviewed to you in the last five days. So I just wanted to tell you uh, what the virus, it can be taken in a very simpler definition as, it is a piece of bad news wrapped in a protein coat. Yes, this is given by one of the author, which is considered as the, be the best definition for this virus. Let us see what is uh, the advantages or disadvantages or we call it as the merits or demerits when compared to the synthetic drugs versus the medicinal plants. Uh, the synthetic drugs, comparatively, these are very few, relatively very few in number uh, when we are talking about, especially about the antiviral uh, treatment or the drugs, they are very, relatively very few in number. And uh, while interacting about the antiviral therapy, the interactivity to the, they interact particularly to the selective antiviral chemotherapy itself, uh, because the replication cycle of the virus, uh, it seems to be where the cells of those seems to be very much similar to that of the human cells and any attempt to suppress these viral cells will uh, be killing the normal human cells itself. Yes, this is a major problem what we are facing whenever we are trying to find out an antiviral drug, they usually kill off the normal human cells itself. That is the major uh, problem what we are facing in finding out any kind of antiviral drugs. And often, usually, the synthetic drugs are unsatisfactory and they are limited to the narrow spectrum of activity. That is, if we are act, uh, using any one kind of antiviral drugs, they will be uh, acting especially towards only one kind of the disease. It is not multidimensional acting and also it is limited therapeutic application. They are very limited and resistant viral strains with adverse drug reactions are also noticed in the synthetic drugs. Uh, also, when we're talking about the mutant viruses resistance, they create two kinds of problem. One is they arise once again after the treatment. That is a second episode of the virus infections will be there even after the treatment. At present, what we are noticing in the coronavirus itself. And the second ailment, what we are noticing is they leave out a remnant of side effects after the course of the treatment or the toxic effects, they will be left over the 
body of the human body for example it might be loss of appetite or loss of energy or whatever it might be so these two types of ailments we are facing and also the broad spectrum antivirals are less prone to the developing drug resistance but their efficacy is usually a trade off between some cytotoxicity and antiviral effects and we also come across some of the drawbacks of their high specificity we know that any kind of antivirals or any kind of treatment if they are going to find out they will be acting particularly on the Uh, particular virus itself it is not in vague like it will be acting on whole of many types of microbes or many type of fungal uh, fungus or anything like that they are very specific very particular so they had got one uh, some drawbacks in that that is rapid virus adaptation to the drug it will be acting on the particular virus only not on the whole of many other kinds of virus and eventually there is development of uh, drug resistance Uh, due to the accumulating mutation this is the common thing once again uh, we are noticing after the development of the drug usually the resistance will be developed by the human body when the uh, viruses as and when they starts progressing in a higher way so let us see what is the herbal approach what uh, uh, type of approach we have and what stand it gains in the treatment level the herbal approach or the medicinal plants it has a long history of around 4000 to 5000 bc and it is a long traditional use uh, we can notice in that also it has an advantage over the other system of medicine uh, like it has lesser of the toxic effects when compared and has got wider uh, therapeutic window when we are using it and also since civilization period we had been seeing the utilization of this herbs or medicinal plants the plants synthesize and preserve some of the chemical compounds within them and that's why it is called as the treasure or resort of treatment which is used for most of the diseases and ailments by most of the traditional practitioners and also uh, the paramount source of uh, the at recent time sorry in the recent times we see that there is a development in the drug discovery which is due to the paramount sources mm -hmm. of the drugs which has been uh, discovered in the latest periods which is irrespective of the habits whether it is a herb or a shrub or a tree whatever it is they have not left with it any of the type of species they are trying to find out what best can be done out of it and uh, what type of compounds can be isolated from it for any kind of particular virus which has been existed and created problem in the society so it has been advanced in a very well manner in the present day and also the higher plants serve as promising sources for getting a novel antiviral prototypes and uh, we come across many folded remedies uh, regarding this ethno uh, through this ethnobotanical botanical literatures with the use of these extracts infusions powders and many more types of forms can be used in treating the diseases this has been done since centuries and even today we are practic practicing with this uh formulations in different forms and when we are talking about the plant it contains two types of categories that is primary metabolites and as well as secondary metabolites uh it gives a countless benefits for us in the field of fragrances or uh, giving out some of the chemical compounds or molecules from it in fibers and creating some beverages or anything like that usually the prim primary metabolites act as the precursors for the bioactive compounds used in the therapeutic drugs and secondary metabolites which are called as alkaloids triterpenoids glycosides and many more they are very much particular in existing in some of the families and they play the important role in giving out the pharmacological actions and to cure the disease and at last i could say that usually when compared to the synthetic drugs they are of very low cost comparatively and more effective with less of toxic effects or side effects what we call and the availability is good comparatively the availability is good if we are giving interest we can grow many plants based on the climate itself it's okay but still we can go it grow it and availability will be good in the uh, sense and it is of low cost comparatively 
and when we are seeing or investigating about the medicinal plant how to go about in uh, investigating about any kind of medicinal plants we come across uh, two variants or two methods what we could follow one is the random screening method usually what all pharma companies uh, carry out that is we call it with the phytochemical factors choosing any of the medicinal plant and directly extracting the chemical compound or the molecule and uh, screening for it what are other chemical compounds are present in it that is one method another method is the traditional knowledge which is uh, got to us through the referential text it might be or due to the ethnopharmacology or whatever it is the discovery of the drug with the help of these references this is the second method usually it is suggested that to up for the second method itself because it gives a higher hit rate than screening the uh, other programs talking about a little bit of the uh, literary review what we can see in our classical text about this antivirals or anything like that we could compare this or take the information from the krimigna dravyas or it we can also compare it with vishagna or many four as such uh, ayurveda compendia have described herbal medicine which are said to be effective against all microorganisms around total 56 drugs of anti helminthic drugs we could as a collect together which has been told by charaka sushruta and as well as vagbata charaka has told around uh, 10 drugs in sutrasthana in his mahakashaya which is called as krimigna sushruta has told under the group of surasadi and as well as lakshadi ganam which will be total around 14 drugs to 11 drugs and vagbata has told it under asanadi gana and as well as arkadi ganam around 19 to 11 drugs also charaka has told a very good information about the uh, usage of this um, Krimigna draws. How many Krimigna uh, Krimis are there? Like 20 around Krimis has been told by him, which uh, which is present both externally and internally, and how it spreads has been told by Sushruta in his Aupa uh, Sargika Vyadis, that is by coughing, sneezing, uh, all those. And when we see the root meaning of this Krimi, it says that it is attacking, surpassing, and overcoming. Drugs acting on these microbial agents have been termed as Krimigna dravyas. This is the statement as what it goes. So these medicinal plants, what has been told in these groups of uh, uh, this thing, categories, what has been told by this Bruhat is they contain many plants in them. These plants contain most of the chemical compounds, which contains the alkalides, tannins, saponins, flavonoids, terpenoids, lignins, and many more, which helps in inhibiting the virus in their replication cycle. And also, surprisingly, we come across one of the situation which I could uh, notice over here. That is, though some of the drugs are not considered under the Krimigna Vargas, but still it has mattered a lot to us because they are working as an antivirals. Uh, a few to quote about is Eshtimadu and as well as Bhumi Amliki. Eshtimadu, the component, the marker component which is present in it, which is called as glyceric acid, it has been act as antiviral activity against Kaposi's sarcoma, associated viruses by elimination of inactive form. So this is one of the drug which has been uh, very widely used in a wider therapeutic window, both as an antioxidant, as immunomodulator, as antiviral, anti-infective, and more for most of the respiratory disorders. And one more drug, what we had come across is Bhumiyamlaki, which also had, uh, that is Phyllanthus species, which also had showed its marked um, antiviral effect regarding hepatitis B. Then some plants and molecules are acting as antivirals. Let us see what plants we come across and what mo molecules are extracted from that. Uh, and those, which are those molecules which are particularly, which are helpful in acting as an antivirals. We come across several pure compounds from some of the drugs like Chakramarda, Dadrubna, Guduchi, Yeshti Madhu, Madhunashini, and many more, which has promising inhibiting effect against COVID viruses. Also, some of the molecules which has been extracted from the plants like curcumin, imodin, hesperidin, epigallocatechin gallate, camphorol, zingirol are some of the potential drug candidates which has been identified for this COVID-19. And also the Tiaflavin showed promising docking of anti-SARS-CoV-2 that is uh, binding uh, component was um, noticed at this level. And 
to tell it more specifically most of the polyphenols are acting in a very better way in uh, treating this viral components in a second sense some of the splavonoids especially the quercetin galacatechin gallate epigalacatechin gallate then diadizin this has been evaluated for inhibitory effects of sars cov2 so these flavonoids are found in most of the plants medicinal plants what we are using in ayurveda uh, and then when we are treating this uh, viruses we concentrate on the replication of the virus cycle and also we can withhold the pass of this uh, virus in many ways like we can inhibit it we can inactivate it or we can suppress the expressing symptoms of those viruses so in that way we can try to suppress the activity of these viruses so in a uh, few of those suppressing categories the fistin and rutin have action of inhibiting viral protease this has been identified and also the molecule epigalocatechin trigalate and biacillin has also suppressed some of the steps of this virus replication and lastly the furin has blocked the spike protein of mouse hepatitis so these are some molecules which has been particularly found in uh, inhibiting the replication cycle of the viruses when we are talking about the replication cycle of this virus how this medicinal plants has been worked out in what steps they are working uh, when we are talking about it we come across four of the steps where these um, molecules of medicinal plants has been identified to be worked out in a very better way so let us see what are those uh, four uh inhibiting uh, steps they are natural products at ace2 blockers that is an uh, angiotensin uh, converting enzyme to blockers and also natural products targeting the tmprss2 that is transmembrane serinase proteinase uh, serinase type 2 the natural products targeting the pepin like protease and lastly the cryptin like protease so at these four levels some of the medicinal plants has been identified in working so uh, these medicine plants uh, which has been reported are around 141 medicinal species belonging to 73 families and 49 purified natural compounds with documented AC inhibitor potential has been identified. When we are seeing or uh, trying to conclude which family members are going to have these type of medicinal plants there, Oleaceae, Magnoliaceae, Labiatae, uh, Loreaceae, they are nothing but the drugs what we are using, that is the Tulasi, Neem, Karpura and many more, they fall under these families itself, which contain some of the volatile principles also in them. And these are the same plants what we are at present using for the purpose of this uh, antiviral in treating the COVID-19. And also when we are seeing uh, regarding this uh, natural products targeting the TMPRSS2 level, um, uh, some of the compounds like quercetin and camphorol uh, are helping out in a very better way and uh, the drugs which are targeting the pepin like proteinase are some cinnamic amides from the gokshura drug that is uh, uh, tribulus terrestris and also uh, the chalcones from the angelica species these two are uh, working out in a very better way at this pepin like protease uh, step and lastly targeting on the crypto um, chymotrypsin like protease again the uh, what this alkaloid chalcos from the angelica species and one of the particular type of algae had been more helpful in treating at this level also we come across one of the information what has been provided from the ethnomedical literature which claims that most of the species uh, products which is in the market has been proved to be drawn from the medicinal plant itself the better example for that is the classical exam uh, that is the classical example which had been taken as a potential drug candidate in the market is the imodin sorry not imodin it is the imitin which, which is acting both as a um, amoebasis and as well as for the abscess purpose, wherein it has been formed due to the uh, Isterinia, some one of the this thing, virus, it has been formed due to that. And uh, this imatin has helped in uh, overcoming that. And also the quinine, which has been seen in the market, it is it has been originated or derived from the cinchona tree. And lastly, the aspirin, morphine, taxol, all this has been developed from the molecules of plant sources itself.
lastly speaking something about the plant synthesized secondary metabolites it is very important to note that the secondary metabolites act a very good role in giving out a very good pharmacological actions but our understanding should be in a uh, very uh, wider way so multi dimensional chemical structures the plants are made up of multi dimensional chemical structures so it has occupied a superior position in treating most of the uh, diseases Uh, due to the presence of many compounds or molecules in a plant it has exhibited better activity if it is properly regulated once we know the chemical compound uh, in the plant in a very good way uh, in a very targeted way we will be very specific in providing a good drug to the particular virus the crude extracts target multiple sites at a time this is one of the favorable matter what uh, the medicinal plants are providing it is not just targeting about the one disease it targets many diseases at a time when we are using it a good knowledge of chemical compounds leads to better understanding of specificity yes of course we should have a complete knowledge of chemical composition then only we are able to identify and give out a um, selective compound to the market in treating a disease conversion of a desirable compound to valuable drug candidate includes availability bioavailability intellectuality also so these also matters that is where it is available whether it has got the bio availability um, um, material in it and what intellectually we are using in um, modifying it all those also counts um, it affects several key events in pathology for example curcumin it is considered as anti infective anti neoplastic anti tumor and many more but still it has failed to take its position as a potential drug for antiviral because uh it, the bioavailability of the drug of this curcumin is uh, not present in that so it has not taken that uh, position when when we are treating this uh, viral problem also when we are seeing the replication cycle uh, of this virus in these steps uh, we can manage providing a good drug there are some drawbacks of the models also when we are using it in human beings before giving it to the clinical trial we use it at the level of animal models also uh, it might be in vitro animal model or uh, the last we go to the in vivo models if even if compound shows promising effect in in vivo assay but it can still become ineffective in animal model trials due to the poor pharmacokinetic profile we cannot understand the complete knowledge of pharmacokinetic profile in an animal model Uh, when compared to the human beings a little bit of variations are there under in vivo condition the target compound remains in direct contact with the cells while in animal models the compound moves to various stages where it loses its bioactivity example the curcumin epigallocatechin gallate etc the th the same thing what i said curcumin lacks with the bioavailability um, concept in it and hence it has not taken that position in acting with this antiviral agent in the society so what solution what we can come across for overcoming all these problems uh, a few to quote about it is changing the route administration when we are seeing about the synthetic drug administration we come across the iv um, iv administration also which acts at a very faster way we are lacking back in that the drug delivery system of course we have many uh, methods of drug delivery but still all the methods are not being adopted nano formulation still we have to come across with the minuteness of the drugs in administration and uh, using adjuvant system altering the structural analog of course uh, we uh, had been come or uh, we had been adopted with some of the adjuvant systems that is with the intake of the milk after lehia conception all those but still it has to be encouraged mm, then further modifications of pharmacokinetic profiles of compound genetic modification for engineering plant metabolites uh, all those has to be explored then uh, we come across many evidences that these uh, medicinal plants has been acting as an antivirals the krimigna dravias what i said all those has been already uh, proven that they are particularly acting on the virus itself so some of the evidences to be quoted uh, i just wanted to scroll it out that has that it has been proved already i cannot read it out all the same thing has been uh, made it in a smaller uh, winding up way to you and has been presented to you these are some of the evidences what we get 
and lastly regarding the management guidelines so till now i had talked to you about the medicinal plants uh, how they are going to act and at what steps of replication of cy uh, cycles what molecules are particularly acting to come about the formulations or uh, any type of uh, single drug therapy what has been adopted till today for the covid uh, for the treatment of this covid 19 Uh, is we, uh, many of the organizations had adopted uh, different types of formulations, and um, many of uh, the institutes had adopted uh, the other ways as how they feel comfortable and how they feel that it is more better. They had adopted with that. A few to quote about is Sudarshana Churna, Talisadi Churna. This uh, combination has been adopted by one of the uh, group and uh, the. Ayush Ministry. They had given a, a complete formula of Guruji Ghanavati, Ashwagandha Churna, and Chavan Prash as a prophylactic to be used for the treatment of this COVID-19. Along with this, for the Dhupana Karmas also, Krimigna Dravyas can be used. This is the uh, encouraging uh, prospectus which has been uh, given by Ayush Ministry once again. Also, along with that, what type of lifestyle we have to adopt? It has also been encouraged by this Ayurvedic and single drugs. They are they had encouraged with. most of the single drugs to be advocated at the home remedy level itself that is ginger turmeric garlic tulsi and many more has been advocated so that it will be made into a decoction form and can be taken all these are the medicinal plants which contain the same uh, chemical compounds or the molecules which i had told you uh, just uh, in this session itself mm, and for the purpose of uh, And one uh, one more is left over harita kiya the yoga has also been advocated by one of the group and uh, the other thing is uh, for the purpose of making the sanitizers also they had told to use most of the krimigna and as well as vishagna dravyas and most of the pharmacological pharmacological companies has also adopted the same thing uh, in giving out a product of uh, their sanitizer and lastly to conclude a number of Uh, a large number of plant extracts and phytochemicals have been come out with this antiviral property with the herbal approach we would be adding some more uh, treatment aspect for this antivirals that is immunomodulatory effect will also be a complementary for this uh, um, treatment uh, herbal antiviral compounds which are accessible they are self accessible they do not require any laborious pharmaceutical synthesis yes we this we have to understand they are self accessible and they do not require any kind of laborious pharmaceutical synthesis and they are emerging as interesting alternatives in today's world of growing resistance to antiviral drug therapy also their work doesn't stop here it needs to be determined with optimal treatment doses and formula for the herbal preparations uh though herbal plant preparation are widely used in several parts of world the data about the interaction of medicinal plant in the living system is non existent yes this is uh, this is a lacuna what we are still uh, hindering back the traditional medicine practice should be clubbed with the scientific research yes this is most important it has to be clubbed with the scientific research so that we'll come up with modern drug discovery from phytochemicals the scientific data pertaining to the detailed pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamics of the medicinal plant and their preparations should be made available to the researchers so that randomized clinical trials may be designed and done so that it will be open for all and it will be a like profile uh, for everyone to carry out any kind of researches by adopting such approaches the idea of incorporating and implementing a particular herbal formulation in routine therapy may be transformed into reality this is what is needed uh, for us in the coming days so here i end up with a short uh, information about the medicinal plant uh, and its molecules how they are going to be acting on the cycle of this replication of the virus and what other formulations or single drugs we had been using till today for this covid 19 purpose um, and at the last i thank the organizers principal of gmc mysore and all the organizers and all the other supporting staffs and pg students everyone who had uh, contributed in coming out uh, with a positive attitude of this webinar thank you one and all uh, stay safe thank you ma'am for an informative presentation our next presenter for eighth scientific session of tattva prabodhini is dr anurupa hk it's my privilege to introduce her 
Ma'am has pursued her undergraduate degree from JSS Ayurveda Medical College, Mysore and postgraduate degree from Taranath Government Ayurveda Medical College, Ballari. Ma'am was awarded Ayur Visharada for securing highest marks in final year BMS exams by Himalaya Drug Company in the year 2002. Currently, she is pursuing MSc in Biochemistry at Karnataka State Open University, Mysore. Ma'am was a resource person for various training programs, reorientation programs, workshops, national and international webinars. Ma'am has presented papers at various national and international seminars and workshops. Ma'am has published papers in various peer-reviewed national and international journals. At present, she is a notified drug inspector under the government of Karnataka and Ma'am is working as an associate professor and head department of Rasa Shastra and Baishajya Kalpana, Government Ayurveda Medical College, Mysore. Over to you, Ma'am. Okay, thank you, Yasmin, for your nice introduction. Today, I'm here to present a few aspects about the role of Rasaushadis in viral fever vis a vis COVID 19. So, the topic will be discussed under these headings introduction about a few points about this Rasaushadis and some of the Rasachikitsa based on the symptoms and few evidence based works on these Rasaushadis and the discussions to say the mode of actions about these uh, Rasaushadis and finally will conclude it. Then coming to the introduction, as we walk in so many centuries away from the descent of Ayurveda, many infectious diseases including viral diseases, they are emerging once again to remind us about their existence as urbanization developed. So the COVID-19 is one among them. And it's a pandemic. This pandemic has shaken the foundation of our overwhelmed, overwhelmed healthcare system across the globe. This scenario has given the opportune time to our traditional Indian medicine to take the road as a fresh approach for public health and disease management. COVID-19, it has sent the world into a medical crisis. It affects the individual with weak immunity more severely. Therefore, enhancing the immunity is definitely one of the ways the doctors across the globe have been using for treating COVID-19 cases. COVID-19 is caused by a zoonotic type of RNA virus with crown-like spikes appearance under the microscope, affecting primarily the smell and taste receptors and causing symptoms like fever, dry cough, shortness of breath and upper respiratory infections. So let me not uh, go into the detail about it because our previous speakers, they had given a lot more information regarding this. So directly I'll move on to the Rasa Oshadis. So Rashastra, it is an offshoot of Ayurveda that was mainly developed in the medieval period, believed to have come into existence in about the 8th century. Nagarjuna and Buddhist sage is considered first to have used mercury so extensively. The ancient Acharyas were well versed in the utilizations of these metals and minerals for therapeutic purpose. Rasaushadis, that is the herbo mineral drugs and formulations, they have maximum potency with a minimum dosage with three characteristic attributes, that is instant effectiveness, the requirement of very small doses, extensive therapeutic utility, irrespective of the prakriti, that is the constitutional variation. Use of the term rasa and rasayana together is indicative of the fact that the rasaushadis were prepared and consumed in the initial days only for the rasayana effect. 
so this resaushadi is along with this disease targeting property of the special immunity boosting property which is badly required in the present pandemic along with the disease target we need to increase the immunity of the person resaushadi it includes bhasmas as well as some of the rasakalpas these rasakalpas can be broadly classified into four types karli that is kalvi rasayana parpati rasayana upipakpa rasayana and poteli rasayana so many formulations has been told in the uh, classifications in the types of these uh, preparations which are indicated in various diseases and systems coming to the symptoms based on the rasa chikitsa now the covid 19 it is um like the exact treatment of that is not yet established in whatever the systems may be the allopathy or ayurveda so the present uh, the line of treatment is based on the symptoms so even though it has been presented with uh, the common symptoms like fever sore throat or respiratory illness it may present even with the symptoms of other systems and even some patients may be asymptomatic and even the symptoms are present the severity where is it may be the mild moderate or the severe so based on the symptoms uh, let me suggest some of the rasaushadis which has proposed depending upon the conditions if there is a feverishness with no recordable temperature if the patient has a doubt of uh, he had been infected or he had come in contact with the infected persons the only the feverishness without any temperature then the proposed rasaushadi is nargiya lakshmi vilasa rasa if the person develop a fever with recordable temperature then tribona kirti rasa mrutyunjaya rasa lakshmi narayana rasa can be advised and if there is a respiratory tract in involvement like if there is a cold or uh, any sh shortness of the breath or any others respiratory symptoms then shwasananda gutika shwasakutara rasa kapha kapha ketu rasa can be administered and if the symptoms are like sore throat or the throat pain arogya vardhini vati kanchana ragu bulu can be given so if there is a combinations of two or more symptoms so depending upon the condition of the pa patient uh, other medicines like uh, the combinations of the medicines can also can be done so with if there is any complications irrespective of the symptoms these rasaushadis can be administered to minimize the or to uh, lessen the effect of the complications like rasa sindura rasa manikya abhaka basma and malla sindura rasa if there is a severe temperature or any respiratory distress or toxic conditions are to boost up the immunity that which has been deprived these drugs can be given like mahalakshmi vilasa rasa that is along with the swarna yukta that is with gold suvarna malini vasanta rasa shwasakasa chintamani rasa hema garbha poteli rasa these poteli kalpas it acts miraculous in whatever the disease the type of preparations that pharmaceutical preparations that had made the drug more and more potent and that suits for most of the diseases including this pandemic if there is a severe toxic conditions jayamangala rasa bruhat kasturi bhairava rasa or even the makaradvaja can be administered then coming to the different stages so the pathogenesis has already told to take it superficially if there is a entry of the virus through root first it invades the mucous membrane in such cases the person can be administered with some of the arsenic compounds like hartala manashila and gauri pashana in this initial stage that is in the chaya or prakopa these drugs arsenic compounds will arrest its entry to the lymph nodes so if it uh, pass on to the next stage that is the primary viremia viremia that is when it if it enters the systemic circulations which can be called as an window period in such cases along with this arsenic compounds like hartala even rasayanas can be administered like which includes tamra and swarna these tamra swarna uh, can be given in the form of basma or some of the formulations which includes these basmas like tamra in arogya vardhini vati or in swarna uh, hemagarbha poteli or the swarna parpati or any other uh, even kalva rasayana containing these drugs can be given in some of the patients who is having pitta prakruti are more of uh, pitta increase in such cases this hartha light may cause some uh, untoward effects in such a cases these drugs should be administered along with the pitta hara dravyas like godanti basma pravada basma or any other suitable dravyas has to be given along with these medicines so if uh, the uh, the conditions it has entered the next 
that is from the systemic circulations it will goes to the ace2 receptors so the ace2 receptors is present in which system based on that the symptoms will develop so depending upon the symptoms developed in whatever the system or whatever the shrotas based on that that is roganusara or vyadhyanusara chikitsa can be administered if the patient is having the more of fever and all jaimangala rasa or um, tribona kirti rasa can be given or if the person is affected with this um, respiratory illness like shwasa kasa and all then mahalakshmi vilasa rasa shwasa kasa chintamani rasa even vishagarbha potali where arthala is present and mavatsanaba can also be given so in the next uh, next stage if there is a complications or if there is a typical presentations uh, there is, uh, along with this roganusara along with this vyadi prathyanika chikitsa some doshahara chikitsa should also be done so depending upon the complications if there is an microhemorrhage and all certain drugs like gairika which arrest the bleeding in the form of shuddha gairika or even some formulations like lagusutha shekar rasa can be given or if autoimmune system has been affected then abraka vaikranta mukta shilajatu can be given if there is some shrinkage of vessels and all then tutta kasisa spatika and as the viral load is more some of the krimignan dravya can also be administered in such cases like tamra vanga loha and even the ballataka should the ballataka in the formulations are um, even the single drug can be administered in these conditions so let me move on to the some of the evidence based works done on these rasaushadis so this is an review articles which uh, includes which uh, uh, has the collections of all these uh, drugs rasaushadis that is the gold iron and mercury first they are uh, they are establishing the safety because the safety and efficacy of these herbo mineral formulations is subject of great concern and present era so in, before going to the efficacy the safety has to be established so this articles it has contained uh, so many um, collections of the literature are and even which has been worked out and that proved the safety of all these drugs the research works that proven antioxidant property too of the gold nanoparticles which effectively helps regulate antigen specific immune response and also improves the health thus herbo metallic formulations contain the gold are effective in illness as well as the improving the health the gold basma of the formulations they plays a key role in overall efficacy as nanoparticles they possess immunomodulatory activity free radical scavenging activity anti stress effect and analgesic effect this has been proved by different uh, test which has been done that is some in vitro studies has been done and also in vivo studies to prove these effects here the swarnite is doing some multitasking so all these are more preferred or any preparations which includes this bas the swarna basma is preferred because it is disease targeting as well as it improves or boosts the immunity as well as it restores the health and this articles also includes uh, other uh, that is the loha preparations even the mandura basma it is hepatoprotective anti fibrotic anti inflammatory detoxifying as well as antiviral property thus these iron preparations they are found safe and effective remedies so another uh, article which directly they had done uh, this study over this covid 19 swarna basma along with the bit uh, that is the betel juice this work it says the mechanism of this action of this synergistic combinations involves the inhibition of redox enzymes such as thyroredoxin reductase induction of endoplasmic reticulum stress and subsequent activation of the unfolded protein response inhibitions of these redox enzymes leads to cellular oxidative stress and intrinsic apoptosis in addition swarna basma is an anti inflammatory drug that reduces cytokinase productions and it stimulates humoral immunity so the dual inhibition of inflammatory pathways and thiol redox enzyme bus by swarna basma makes it an attractive candidate for treating microbial infections including the viral uh, synergistic combinations it inhibits synergistic combinations of uh, that is swarna basma along with this uh, betel leaves it inhibits replications of the sars cov 2 which has been done this in vitro studies in human cells at low mo micro molecular uh, concentrations 
It also demonstrates that synergistic combination treatment resulted in significant reduction in virus-induced inflammations and associated lung injury. Then coming to the next uh, important drug that is the Rajitabasma. So this um, uh, articles it contains the scope of nano silver because these basmas they will go into the uh, size of this nano so this acts completely different which the present uh, nanotechnology says and um, it is not directly indicated in any of the conditions but if there is any involvement of the nervous system this can be given or it can be given adjuvant because it is having this immunomodulation resina quality immunomodulations and anti-aging quality as well as yoga vahi it uh, catalyzes the actions of the other drug but individually this is not much uh, important this rajita basma but this tamra basma so many articles have been uh, published and so many works has been done uh, concentrating on its action as an antiviral this effective use of this copper in different forms have been reported against a variety of viruses Copper, copper alloys, copper nanoparticles and copper surfaces are being studied since a very long time for their antimicrobial effect on various pathogens. These copper nanoparticles, they have been proven to exert antiviral activity on influenza A virus by degradation of viral proteins. In another study, the antimicrobial activities of the different cupric and cuprous uh, compounds against bacteriophage Q beta, a small sized virus that possesses a single stranded RNA as a mo model of human influenza virus, it was also uh, evaluated and good results were found. In another study, this corpus neutralization of infectious bronchitis virus, that polio virus, immunodeficiency, immunodeficiency that's HIV, HIV virus, and other enveloped or non enveloped single or double stranded DNA and RNA virus that also has been reported. Na nano sized copper iodide particles have been proven to show inactivation activity against H1N1 influenza A virus, suggesting that it may be useful for protect protecting against viral attacks and may be suitable for applications on filters, face masks, protective clothing or any kitchen cloths. So another study, it has been reported that copper sulfide nanoparticles it exhibit variable virucidal efficacy against human norovirus. The mechanism of this copper mediated inactivations of this herpes simplex virus is that the cupric ions oxidatively damage the biomolecules this might be useful in the development of the therapeutic antiviral agents this antiviral activity of copper nanoparticles against hepatitis c virus it showed copper nanoparticles inhibit hcv infection by targeting the binding of infectious hcv particles to hepatic cells and the virus entry into the cells Another antimicrobial study of hydrothermally synthesized rhombohedral-like uh, COFeO2 crystals revealed that the antivirus property exhibited by crystals and bacteriophage Q-beta was attracted to copper ion spaces present in the compound. So another study, it has been reported, copper-induced neutralization of virus, namely bronchitis virus, HIV virus, polio virus, and other enveloped or non-enveloped single or double-stranded DNA and RNA viruses. So this potential role of this copper surface, it has been uh, explained even in the modern science and even our uh, Acharyas has been told regarding this. Respiratory droplet transmission is the main route of transmissions and in this present uh, pandemic, but it can also transmit it through surface contact. So studies suggest the phenomenon of contact killing which states that virus die on metallic copper surfaces because of its antiviral activity. This effect of copper or copper alloy surface is well established in various studies. So the copper surfaces, it destroys both the virus genome and its capsid as well as the protein shell. Even the modern science that proves antimicrobial activity of this copper and its alloys, which may be the reason why Sears had advocated the use of vessels and containers made of copper. Even our Acharya Sushruta, he has clearly mentioned that water stored vessels in, a vessel, in the 
Vessels made up of copper or some other materials like bronze, which is an alloy of the copper or any gold and precious stone should be used for drinking as it becomes free from all toxic effects and also it provides relief in the Kasa, Shwasa and Pratishyaya. The copper vessels and bronze vessels not only for the uh, drinking purpose, other purposes like reparations and storage of the medicines and making equipments of these Panchakarma procedures, for all this it has been advised. From the antiviral studies reviewed in this article, it is clear that calcine, that is the copper basma, tamra basma can work against viruses by causing high protein adsorption and denaturation and can potentially exhibit virus inhibitory activities. So another work over this um, infective hepatitis has been told where there is no answer for this in other system of medicines but here is exactly the antiviral property of the drug has not established but the clinical study has been done where these drugs prove to be best in uh, removing the infections where the uh, where it does the hepatoprotective activity also these drugs are this arogya vardini vati which contains parada gandaka loha basma tamra basma and also abraka basma along with her other herbal drugs done bhavana with this nimba vata and along with that the simple abraka basma plain abraka basma also has been attributed to have this hepatoprotective property in this um, hepatitis infective hepatitis the silica which is present in the mica is known to be a free radical scavenger and abraka basma is supposedly supposedly thought to exert free radical scavenging and hepatoprotective effect because of its composition so another directly the um, antiviral activity has been um, proved by this um, preclinical studies that is antiviral property of this shilajatu this shilajatu it exhibited dose dependent inhibitory activity against hsv1 hsv2 hc mv and rsv infectivity this shilajatu did not affect cell viability at concentration as high as 1500 um, mg per ml demonstrating that the antiviral effect was not consequence of cytotoxicity here the silajitu it is not killing the virus but what it is doing is the result has suggested that silajitu may either target the early steps of the virus replicative uh, cycle or it acts as a virucide by irreversibly inactivating the viral particles the study it also shows the antiviral actions of the Shilajitu, time of addition and virucidal assays indicate the, that the inhibitory effect mainly depends on the capacity of Shilajitu to interact with the virus particles rather than with the cell components thereby preventing virus attachment to the cell surface. Result of this study it indicates that besides preventing viral uh, that is the initial viral infection, Shilajitu can also limit ongoing infection in vitro. This feature might be relevant for in, in vivo infections characterized by the continuous release of virions by infected cells that promptly interact with the neighboring cells, often resulting in direct cell to cell spread and syncytia formation. And another uh, study has been done on this COVID-19 by this Indian, uh, this work has been published, Indian Traditional Ayurvedic Treatment Regimen for Novel Coronavirus. The research has been carried out in the Patanjali Research Institute in Uttarakhand. They have screened various herbs and herbomineral products. They look for their binding affinities to COVID-19. COVID-19, that is in vivo study, they have done the animal experimentations by using the COVID-19 in such animals. Uh, the essential proteins and host proteins interactions they have detected and they have discovered even several such uh, herbal and herbomineral products they have potential to combat covid 19 and its pathogenicity so shwasari rasa is one among the drug which they have screened for this uh, shwasari rasa it contains abraka basma mukta shukti basma kapardaka basma and godanti basma here abraka basma it has an anti-inflammatory properties and provides relief from the chronic and chronic and cough and respiratory illness mukta shukti basma it has been traditionally used for its anti-inflammatory properties and also lung diseases kapardaka basma as reported to have an anti-asthmatic properties gondati basma as anti-inflammatory functions and antipyretic actions so the uh, work on these individual drug has already done so they are 
uh, they didn't do the individual uh, ingredients work they just take the combination the formulations has been taken to screen it the presence of all these polyhubs so along with these uh, basmas it also includes some of the herbal uh, drugs polyhubs and basma combinations in the shwasari rasa they have proven lung protective properties they would serve as superior formulations for symptomatic treatment of the respiratory illness observed in covid 19 patients so these are some of the histopathological changes which they had taken from this lung tissue this uh, shwasari rasa it decreases the lung airway inflammations and asthma related histo histopathological changes so you can uh, see the gradual changes in the uh, histopathological uh, is, uh, that is the changes which has been observed from the initially uh, what happens when they are infected and after the administrations of this shwasari rasa and over album allergen induced pathological features they are reduced upon by this oral uh, shwasari rasa treatment in a dose dependent manner it works similar to dexamethasone oral intake of this dsr it has reduced inflammatory cell inflam infiltrations in bronchi alveoli and suppress the bronchial epithelial thickening so overall this shwasari rasa it reduces total inflammatory pathological scores in the lungs uh, this drug administration it decreased even the cardinal features of this lung inflammations so this in this study they had taken the dexamethasone as an standard drug this is a allergen induced mucus hypersecretion by this bronchial epithelial cells was decreased by this uh, shwasari rasa in a dose dependent manner then allergen induced peribronchial collagen de uh, deposition was also reduced by this uh, shwasari rasa treatment pro inflammatory cytokine secretions in bronchial lavage was attenuated by this shwasari rasa and these responses were compared with the standard drug dexamethasone so these are some of the evidence based um, uh, drugs which had been proven and anti viral drugs and also in this some of these in the symptoms in the covid 19 many are such as many of these are still on progress and few they had done and it to publish so i just collected few published articles which were regarding this um, resaushadis working on virus and also specifically with this covid 19 symptoms so coming to the discussions these basmas they are the most ancient form of administration of this nano medicine analgesic anti inflammatory immunomodulatory activity and also antioxidant activity free radical scavenging activities of these various basmas have been identified and nano technology is held responsible for all these properties due to its target oriented technology so uh, this is the present trend where uh, nano technology they are working out and as our basma it is go, it goes to the size of this nano you can say that also work in the same manner it is observed that nano medical applications of various drug is proportionate to their particle size and shape so when the increased putta has been done the sizes will be reduced still and smaller the particle the quicker the action in the cellular inter nationalizations and consequent effects metal ingredients act as the carrier of the herb derived a uh, derived organic matter used during the pharmaceutical processing so many at times not only basmas has been administered in these formulations in the vati and uh, other preparations even herbal drugs will also be added so what these metal basmas will do is it will take these herbs like this aconitum uh, parax or it may be the pipali or maricha or even the adraka they will they are known to be useful in many uh, conditions many uh, symptoms of this uh, covid 19 which the previous uh, speaker has been explained these drugs will be taken by the metal basma to the target and it helps for the action of the uh, drug so even it has been administered in the low dosage it has been taken in a, a very less um, compositions in the what is form but still it will have the actions because of this uh, metal basmas which will take them to the target so now you, you can say that our basmas they are not only nano uh, nano particles along with that they also acts like a nano carriers interactions of the particle with biological system including living cells is one of the 
most interesting areas of basic and applied research at the interface of biology and particulate materials typical features of basma have been recently demonstrated through tem and afm so these are some of the analytical instruments which had been uh, show the changes are which, which has been show the properties of these basmas and how they help in contracting or how the mode of actions how it will work has been can be uh, interpreted by the reports of these instruments a further study has been shown that swarna basma principally it constituted of globular uh, globular sorry globular gold particles of 56 to 57 nanometer interestingly the same study also reveals swarna basma to be devoid of any other heavy metal or organic materials by its screening through aas that is atomic absorption spectrophotometer and also through the is even raman spectroscopy it is employed for investigating the interaction of the cell line that is the a 549 with the eshada basma here the study has been done uh, using this eshada basma using the uh, with the help of this raman spectroscopy this uh, spectral analysis is executed by identifying the difference in intercellular dna or rna proteins and lipids concentrations between particles treated or untreated cells comparison between basma treated cells and untreated cells indicates that vibrational peaks corresponding to the dna or rna molecule show a significant increase in the cells treated with eshada basma apart from the dna molecules several other vibrational peaks related to the protein molecules also show a significant increase in a549 cells after the treatment with the uh, a respective that is the eshada basma these results indicate the basma treatment of a 549 possibly delays dna degradations and enables retention of higher amount of protein molecules in the cells coronavirus it also caused repeated peripheral stimulus that has created a state of central hypersensitivity linked to other bodily functions in complex ways causing symptoms like cough and sneezing thus probably infecting the brain region responsible for taste and smell providing early signs signaling for self quarantine as a method of self diagnosis this in such conditions in a initial stage our rasaushadi uh, it is known to have a particle size so small that even it may reach the brain tissues so which make them more potent and quicker in actions as compared to other medicines such conditions also they are, that is in the initial stage as a preventive aspects as well as a prophylactic that is initial stage um, yeah, these drugs will work better and there are manifold medicinal potions quoted in classical text which might be assessed for their target specific antiviral actions some of the most effective formulations which endure the capacity of fighting corona virus it may be the sanjeevani vati jayamangala rasa tribona kirti rasa they have the potential qualities of fighting against the virus even uh, my ministry of ayush they had um, prepared this protocols which includes these drugs then coming to the conclusions the world is currently facing desperate times in the form of pandemic and is in need of an urgent prophylactic and therapeutic measures to effectively combat the covid-19 many researchers and scientists they are struggling to find the cure for viral diseases ayurveda which includes these herbal and herbo mineral preparations can also be searched for its potential rasaushadis that can play a significant role in boosting the immune system of the human beings and also reducing the susceptibility of catching infections in general so this is for the preventive aspects and few of them they are also screened for their antiviral properties by analytical and experimental studies it has been proved they have the action of this antiviral property however the clinical evaluations of such measures in the novel virus needs to be justified through proper trials and observational studies thank you and i thank our principal dr gajanan aigde sir and our senior professors for um, organizing such a webinar and providing me the opportunity to present here and also i thank dr alta who helped me to collecting the data for this topic thank you
Thank you, ma'am, for a very informative presentation. We now conclude the eighth scientific session of Tattva Prabodhini Ayurveda for COVID-19 pandemic. Ninth scientific session will be streamed live at 2.30 p.m. Presenters for that session are Dr. Shilpa and Dr. Mohan Kumari. Stay tuned. Thank you all.